FMC is really known. And also make sure Welcome to this edition of AFMC TV. I'm Robin Ledbetter. Thank you so much for joining us. So today I have with me Dr. Austin Porter. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Porter. Thank you, Robin. Thank you for the invite. So he is the Assistant Professor in Health Policy and Management at the College of Public Health at UAMS. And you have a, a research team that's doing some really incredible research. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I certainly have to give credit to, um, you know, my, my research team, uh, Dr. Katie Allison, Dr. Nikita Lovelady. Katie has been phenomenal in doing uh, suicide research. And so when I saw these numbers, she was the first person who I thought of. I was like, I've got to get in, get in touch with Katie. We've got to have this conversation. We've got to write this up. And Nikita and I, uh, we've worked together on other projects together. She's really focusing in on homicides in the state. And so uh, particularly among the African-American population, and um, and so, you know, the three of us, we all got together. We're up, you know, we're young assistant professors and, you know, we worked together in the past. And I was like, y'all, we've got to get together and write something up and, and, and address this. So tell us specifically about your research angle and what you found. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of background uh, in terms of my research. I study trauma and injury epidemiology in the state. Uh, I have done so since the beginning of the trauma system. I was one of the first uh, injury epidemiologists that we had here in the state. And uh, that was all before COVID-19 happened, right? And so uh, once the pandemic hit, I got pulled into COVID-19 response, you know, the data management, uh, reporting, uh, a lot of that and then once the pandemic kind of subsided, then I went back into my love, my passion, which is injury and trauma. And one of the first things that I want to look at is what's been the impact of the pandemic on a lot of injuries and trauma that we've seen in the state. First thing that I noticed was that we saw a big spike in suicide numbers. And, you know, we know that uh, the pandemic was associated with a lot of undue mental health, uh, mental stress. People lost their jobs, lost family members. Uh, you know, it really upended our way of life. And so I wanted to look into why those numbers were, were peaking the way that they were. And then, you know, just kind of start peeling back the layers of the onion and you find uh, something that you hadn't seen before in terms of just the rate of African-Americans who've died from suicide in the state. And uh, that's when, you know, all of this came together. And you've published articles on this, but you, you really have done extensive work on this specifically targeting Arkansans. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. So you mentioned that you are noticing an upward trend in suicides, specifically a, among Black Arkansas. Yes, yes, so yes. Tell me a little bit about what those numbers look like. Yeah. Um, so the numbers are relatively no, low. You know, we're talking about numbers in the 20s um, and 40s, 50s, right? But what was alarming was the, the rate in which they increased. So between 2015 and 2020, we saw uh, more than doubling of the suicide rate among black Arkansas in the state. And just in between 2019 and 2020, we saw a 55% increase in the rate of suicide among black Arkansans. That is something that you rarely see. Um, you know, that big of a jump, that short amount of time uh, for suicides. And so again, this really um, set off alarms within me and, you know, had to, had to, we had to get this information out. We had to let people know that this is going on. So since, since the pandemic, we, we know that mental health has become a top priority for Arkansas mm -hmm. um, and, and for many Americans. Do you, have you noticed that change uh, since you've started this research that within specifically mental health, what, what are you seeing as the trend? Yeah, well, I think that we're, we're talking more about mental health. Um, you know, people had to do a lot of the sheltering in place. In the early days of the pandemic, there was a lot of social isolation that went on. You know, people couldn't go to their, their jobs. They couldn't go to the grocery stores like they once did before. That set in a sense of isolation. And um, that's, you know, can lead to depression, can lead to anxiety, other mental health diagnoses that are associated with increased risk for suicide. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're talking about it more, but, um, you know, I think it brought a level of awareness 
that, that we hadn't seen before in, in times past. So it's, tell me how big of an increase, you touched a little bit on the numbers. Tell me specifically what, what is the increase? You said you started from 2019 through 2020. What what was that increase? What did it look like? Yeah, so there was a 55% increase in the suicide rate among Afri- African Americans. Um, again, much larger than what we see among our, you know, our white counterparts and other racial and ethnic groups. Uh, that alone in African Americans probably by far the largest jump that we've seen uh, in suicide. But here's another thing too. So when we were looking at the um, uh, rate of depression, and this is, you know, I want to kind of focus in on the pediatric population because that that's that um, let us know kind of the trends of where things are going. So there's a, a survey that went out, the Arkansas Prevention Needs Assessment that was conducted between 2021 in 20, no, I'm sorry, 2020 and 2021, uh, of over 100,000 Arkansas students. And what they found was that they had asked a question on depression. They said, have you felt depressed within the past 30 days, so depressed that nothing can cheer you up? Now, again, this is 100,000 Arkansan, young Arkansans who filled this survey out, and about 10% said all the time, 10%. 10% is a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. They said, I'm depressed all the time. And then when we looked at that information stratified by race, broken down by race, um, I mean, we saw some pretty uh, interesting variations there, you know, among one of the highest rates of depression to that, de- that degree was the Pacific Islander population here in the state. Uh, at 12.9% of Pacific Islanders who responded to the survey indicated that they were so depressed all the time within the last 30 days to where nothing could cheer them up. Uh, 11.3% of the African-American respondents said that they felt that level of depression. 9.9% of white respondents felt that level of depression. And so, you know, we really have to be in tune with our, our kids, our young population, because they're the ones who, when we look at the suicide rates, especially among African Americans, we see a large uptick in suicides in that population. So let's talk ages. So mm-hmm. we talk about um, demographics with, with different areas, but specifically ages, what was the change in that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we saw in in the article that we published, and I'm gonna read this here. So we saw in 2020, there were 14% of black Arkansans who died from suicide were younger than 18 years old compared to 3% among white Arkansans who died during that same year from suicide. So we're seeing a big difference in the in the makeup of the population who died by suicide, 14% compared to 3%. Well, one would say, well, that's not that big of a difference. I mean, relatively low, and yes, yes they are. But what happens is that we see a decrease in the average age of decedents who died from suicide. So starting in 2015, the average age of white uh, Arkansans who died from suicide was about 44 years old. Uh, and I think for African-Americans was about 43, very close. Uh, but as time progressed, we saw um, younger, we saw that number go down for African-Americans, it went down to 31 years. And uh, among white Arkansans who died from suicide, it remained pretty much the same. And so that let me know that we're seeing more younger African-Americans who are dying from suicide. Um, and, and and that again is a, is a, is a reason to, to sound the alarm. So from a public health standpoint, yes. why why is all of this important? Yeah, so I you know, this is extremely important because again, when we see that level of increase in suicide rates, um, you know, no matter whatever the population is, I mean, when we see a big jump like that, that is a that is a public health issue. That is a public health problem. We have to make sure that we move the resources in the right uh, in the right direction so that we can mitigate the the increase that we have been seeing. Let's yeah. talk resources. Yeah. So yeah. what yeah. what is offered within Arkansas that you would suggest providers, healthcare professionals look towards? Absolutely. So um, the, we, we are very fortunate to have a suicide prevention hotline that's housed here in state at the Arkansas Department of Health. And uh, to reach that resources, you can call 988. You know, it's very similar to 911. We wanted a number that anyone could just, you know, when in, their, uh, in the midst of a crisis, they can pick up their cell phone or pick up any phone and dial 988. They will be connected to a mental health uh, counselor, to services, to a resource that can help them through their crisis. There's also AR Connect Now 
And that's an, uh, a service that's offered through UAMS, where again, they can uh, get people in touch with resources uh, that can help them in the midst of their crisis. And if a healthcare provider wants to read your research, wants to yeah. learn more about it, how can they do that? Yeah, so we recently published a, uh, an article in the uh, journal of the Arkansas Medical Society under the AFMC column. Um, they can certainly go there uh, and read more on our uh, on our study, on our numbers that we found. Uh, we talk a lot about some of the other resources that are available. There are uh, programs like the Confess Project. The Confess Project is a uh, is is started here in Arkansas and uh, what it is, it's a, a service that's offering to barber, barber shops, beauty shops, where the salon operators and barbershop, uh, you know, people who barbers, they can, you know, talk to their clients while they're getting their hair cut or getting their hair done, talk about mental health and say, hey, there are some resources and be in tune with their clients' feelings, emotions and perspectives and, and uh, you know, kind of identify whether or not a person is in crisis. What a clever and unique way and yes. tool to yes. equip people to do that yes. in their everyday lives. That who would have thought in the barbershop? Absolutely. What you a can really re neat thing. We all have to go to the barbershop, right? right? I, I just went this past weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, Dr. Porter, thank you so much. Thank you. Really valuable information. And I applaud your team and the amazing work that they're doing. That's so important for the entire state of Arkansas. Thank you so thank much, you. Robin. Thank, thank you. you. Well, that's it for this edition of AFMC TV. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.